Hi, Year 5, it's Miss Hall here. Um, I'm just going to take you through your writing task this week for your Week 11 Home Learning Pack. So, your task is to write a letter from Sammy the Turtle to humans, asking them to consider the negative impact that they have on his home, the ocean. So this is a really lovely film that I happened to watch maybe a year or so ago. And I know it's a child's film, but I was absolutely engrossed in it. And it's such a brilliant film. If you have got the time to do so, um, I would recommend that you watch the whole film. You don't have to for this task, um, but I would really recommend it because it's a great film that really highlights a lot of the issues um, that we're um, trying to tackle with regards to the environment and in particular the ocean and all the animals that live in it. So it's a really good watch. So the first thing that you need to do before you get started is you need to watch um, the clip that I've included in your uh, packs. So you should find the link for that in your packs. If not, I will also copy it in the description below this video. So you need to go to 37 seconds 50 sorry, 37 minutes, 50 seconds, and then watch up until 39 minutes and 18 seconds. So this little turtle um, in the clip is called Sammy, and the film follows his journey through life as he grows, traveling through the oceans, and it highlights the dangers he faces due to human impact. So if you could pause me for a moment and then click on this, uh, on this link, on this clip that I've included below and just watch um, that, that clip, please. Um, while you're doing so, have a think about the following questions. What is Sammy chewing on? Why might this be dangerous? What is floating in the sea around him? Where do you think it came from? Why has it ended up in the sea? What happens to Sammy? What ends up on his head? What might have happened if his friend didn't come to help him? And how might Sammy have been feeling at this point? So pause me, watch the clip, and then come back to these questions and have a little think. So once you've done that, <clears throat> let's have a little chat about these questions together. So what is Sammy chewing on and why might this be dangerous? Now, I can't quite make it out. I can't tell whether it's a bit of log, a bit of tree that he's chewing on, but it seems to be quite elastic. Um, and also, if you think about what's floating around him, it looks to me that there's a lot of rubbish on the surface of the ocean. So I'm not quite sure what he's chewing on in the initial part of the clip. It could just be a log but it could also be some kind of debris, some kind of rubbish. And it looks like it might be some kind of rubber and he's pulling at it. Now, <clears throat> thinking about um, where it might have come from, the ocean doesn't produce rubbish. So it's obviously coming from us. Now, we produce an awful lot of rubbish um, across the world um, each year. Um, I'm going to talk about that in just a moment in a bit more detail. Um, Unfortunately, a lot of that rubbish ends up in landfill. So if you think you put your rubbish out in, in your dustbin, you put it out in your big bins and the, the, the rubbish men come and collect it and they take it to landfill, which are huge pits dug into the earth and the rubbish is put there and then it's buried. And over time, it breaks down. However, a lot of the rubbish doesn't break down. Um, and a lot of the rubbish during this um, transportation of the rubbish from from our bins to landfill it can get caught up in the wind um, obviously unfortunately some people litter they don't actually throw their rubbish away um, and so a lot of rubbish can unfortunately end up in the ocean okay so that's why there's been a real push um, the last I'd just say 10 years or so, maybe more, but a real push even more recently on why it's so important to try to recycle so we can really cut down on that rubbish, but not only recycle, actually reuse. Um, if you think about water bottles, those plastic water bottles, some people use one of those a day. Can you imagine if every single person used one of those a day? How much rubbish we're creating. So that's why we try to use things like reusable water bottles, um, or um, you'll find a lot of um coffee shops and restaurants are now no longer giving out plastic straws 
plastic's a really nasty one because it takes such a long to a uh, long time to break down also we'll talk about that in a, in a bit more detail as well when it ends up in the ocean it turns into something called microplastic so plastics are really nasty rubbish so that's why there's such an emphasis on on recycling at the moment um so as you can see in the clip um unfortunately Sammy's bobbing along, minding his own business, trying to find some food. He's nibbling on something that perhaps he shouldn't be that might cause him some harm. Um, if it's plastic, if it's rubbish, it might be toxic. It could um, block his stomach. Um, and what ends up on his head is a plastic bag. Now, you might remember a few years ago now, supermarkets banned plastic, ban, uh, plastic bags and we had we had to start paying for them. And again, this was to encourage us to start to reuse our bags, again, to cut down on that rubbish that we're creating. So what happens to Sammy is a plastic bag ends up on his head and it pulls him down, 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 deeper into the sea. Um, what might have happened if his friend didn't come to help him? He was very lucky that his friend was there at the right time and helped him to get the bag off. If he wasn't there, um, he may have suffocated, he may have drowned. So how might Sammy have been feeling at this point? Well, he might have been feeling terrified at first. He didn't know what it was, um, scared for his life, perhaps. And then once it was over, perhaps he felt a little bit of relief, the fact that his friend was able to help him and save him. You know, he comes swimming as fast as he can up to the top of the ocean um, to try and get some breath. Once he's calmed down, I wonder if he would start to feel really angry and cross because this plastic bag this rubbish shouldn't be this is his home it shouldn't be there okay we're littering we're littering his ocean aren't we so maybe he starts to feel quite cross and angry <clears throat> and the sad thing is that this isn't just a film this is actually happening in real life um there are a few more pictures that i've included in your packs but if you um have a look at these pictures here i've just selected a few um you can see that these poor turtles have been harmed from our rubbish. This plastic here um, is one of those, it's, you know, the, the plastic that holds drink, uh, cans of drink together. It's ended up in the ocean. If you think this little turtle as a baby has accidentally swum through and it's got caught and he's actually grown because he hasn't had his little friend there to help him. So he's grown and as he's grown, the plastics restricted his growth, which is why he's grown like this. And then you can see the picture above, um, a similar situation to what happened to Sammy in the clip. It looks like this turtle is about to swim into the back. You know, he might get stuck, he might suffocate, or he might start to eat it. Again, this is not safe for these animals. And if you look at the pictures on the left, this is um, the top left-hand picture is a bird's eye view of what we call the Great Pacific Garbage Pack garbage patch and it's a collection of rubbish in the ocean and there are a few garbage patches um, in our oceans and it is due to the currents the currents of the ocean um, end up uh, all the rubbish sort of ends up drifting along the current and then coming together in these large patches um, as you can see here now I'm not an expert on this, but there is a clip that I've attached as well. It's really important for you to watch because you can learn a little bit more about this and you need to learn some facts because I want you to include some facts in your writing. Okay, so I've included one here. Humans produce approximately 350 million tonnes of rubbish every year and 8 million of those tonnes end up in the ocean. Okay, so hopefully through this writing task, it will also get you to start thinking about your impact as well and what you do at home. Do you recycle? Do you reuse your water bottle? Do you use plastic straws? Do you uh, use bags for life? Do you take your bags to the shops? Do you reuse them or do you buy new bags every time? So exposing you to this will hopefully make you have a, a little hard think um, about ways that you might be able to to make a change and also educate your family as well maybe have a conversation with your family and discuss some ways that you'd be able to cut down on your rubbish because as i say this isn't just a film this is actually a real issue that we all are responsible for we need to take action because it's only going to get worse okay so there's some important facts some important lessons to be learned so make sure you do watch that clip as well um, and once you've uh, clued yourself up, once you've learned some facts, 
we will get on with our task. So let's have a quick recap. Our task is to write a letter, imagining that we are Sammy the turtle. We're gonna put, put ourselves in him, his shoes and we're gonna write a, t a letter to the humans, asking them to consider the negative impact they have on his home, the ocean. So let's go through the plan first of all. I want you first of all to describe what happened to you using the clip um, of the plastic bag. And in Sammy's words, explain to the humans what happened to you and how it made you feel. Talk about those emotions. What happened to you? You were terrified, scared for your life and how you felt lucky that you were able to recover from it. Your friend was there to save you, but how perhaps, you know, you're worried about your other fellow sea friends that might not be so lucky. Um, you might talk about how you're really cross, you know, your, your home, your beautiful natural home is being littered and being ruined by the impact of humans. So talk to the humans, explain your experience, describe it to them. Number two, I want you to explain why you're writing and by explaining why you're writing, you're introducing the problem. Okay, so you're going to start to tell them that this experience happened to you because, and you're going to tell the humans, let them know, you know, what are they doing wrong? And then number three will back that up. So step number three, you're going to then start to include some facts that you've learned from watching the, the video to emphasize and back up your point. Okay. And then last but not least, I want you to finish your letter with a final plea to encourage humans to consider their impact on your home. Okay, so using those facts, using that knowledge, try to encourage them to make a change. Maybe you could come up with some ideas that they could do, um, like we just discussed a moment ago, um, to help cut down on the rubbish. Now, the success criteria we're looking at is first person, because you're writing in the words of Sammy. So first person, I, me, my, um, we. I definitely want you to include some facts. Um, as it's the end of the year, I just wanted you to recap your noun phrases. It's something that you've been really good at. So let's just see what you've got. Um, just to add to your writing, just to make it more interesting. Okay, you're describing your habitat. Um, you might want to describe how beautiful it is, but you might also want to describe how it's been ruined as well um, by the human impact. So um, use some noun phrases there. Last week, um, your SPAG task was looking at sentence structures, and we spoke a little bit about simple, um, compound, and complex. So complex sentences include uh, subordinate and relative clauses. So I want you to practice that by including some subordinate clauses, because this is something I really do want you to get good at um, before going into year six, and to feel more confident using them. Um, and since we did it last week, while it's fresh in your head, let's practice. And then your extension is emotive language. So I want you to evoke some kind of emotion, make the humans feel bad. Okay. So use sentences that are going to get some kind of emotion out of the humans, because if they're feeling emotional, they're more likely to listen to your point. Okay. Now, there are a couple of other things that I want you to include, although I've not included them in the success criteria, I think it is important that you think about these modal verbs. So in part of the, in parts of the letter, you're actually trying to persuade the humans um, to think about their actions. So you might want to use um, some modal verbs like uh, you must consider the damage that you do. You can make a change. Um, you may not realize what you're doing. Um, but it has a really bad effect. Um, if you change, it will make a difference. Okay, so just a few examples off the top of my head. I'm sure you'll do much better than that. And then of course, some persuasive language. So I've included a few sentence starters here because in that last sentence, that last part of your letter, I've said to you, I want you to give a, a last final plea. So you might want to include some persuasive, persuasive language. It is vital, it is crucial that you help because I'm sure that you agree I'm sure you agree that without a doubt, if you do not make changes then. Okay, so that will make your last paragraph quite powerful. Okay. So I've done a model right for you here. It's quite long. I think I got a little bit passionate, put myself in Sammy's shoes um, and I've color coded it with our success criteria. So let's have a read through. Dear humans, today, as I was swimming along in search of food, so I've got a subordinate clause there, I had the most terrifying experience. 
The great ocean can be menacing and unpredictable for a little turtle like me with all its fierce predators. However, today I was attacked by something different. It wasn't from the ocean. As I clung to a, p a piece of floating debris, that is also a subordinate clause there, something came down and engulfed me like a beast from the sky, pulling me down deeper and deeper into the ocean. I couldn't catch my breath and my little heart was thumping like a drum. I tried desperately to free myself from its grip, but I couldn't pull myself up. Luckily, as I sunk further and further down into the dark abyss, my friend appeared and rescued me. Gasping for breath, I swam towards the surface, only to find out that the strange thing suffocating me had been a plastic bag. As I looked around, I saw that I was surrounded by human rubbish. It turns out that I had been swimming through the Great Pacific garbage patch. My heart sank. This is not how my home should look. I couldn't help but think how lucky I was that my friend had been there to help me and that perhaps not all turtles would be so lucky. I'm writing to you humans to ask you for your help and to tell you about the dangers your rubbish brings us. I hope that after you read this letter, you may find it in your hearts to make some changes to help make our magnificent home a safer place. Did you know that you produce 350 million tonnes of rubbish every year and that 8 million tonnes ends up in our oceans? Although plastic bags are a problem, items such as old fishing nets, pens, toothbrushes and water bottles are just a few of the items that end up in our water too. These items are dangerous because we can end up entangled or trapped or we might mistake them for food when they are toxic to eat. I beg you, on behalf of all my majestic sea friends, please help to save our precious home. You can reduce the amount of rubbish you produce by recycling plastic or using a reusable water bottle. This doesn't just harm us, it can harm you too. These plastics are broken down into microplastics, which are tiny pieces that end up in the tummies of fish and then onto your plate. Who knows the damage that this toxic plastic is causing you? It's time to make a change. If we don't, the garbage patch will only continue to grow until the rubbish will outnumber me and my fellow sea friends. Yours faithfully, Sammy the Sea Turtle. So, because I've colour coded it, you should be able to clearly see where I've included the success criteria. I realise that I've forgotten to highlight um, first person, but you can see I've been using I, uh, me, us. Um, I've included some facts. So I did watch the video myself. I watched quite a few actually, it's very interesting. Um, but make notes as you're watching them and then include those facts in your writing. Um, I've got a lot of subordinate clauses. I've started my sentences with my subordinate clauses as well. Play around with that. Remember, you can use a subordinate clause um, to start your sentence or you can use it after your main clause as well. I've got a good range of noun phrases and the emotive language. So my little heart, it makes the reader feel sorry. It makes the humans feel sorry for Sammy. My heart sank. This is not how my home should look. Perhaps not all turtles would be so lucky. You're, oops, sorry, let me click back on that. You're almost pulling on the heartstrings of humans. You're trying to make them feel something. Now you can also see that um, I've included other success criteria as well. I've included other elements. Um, so at, the, at this stage now, at the end of year five, don't be um, restricted by the success criteria. If you think that there's something that you could include that would work, that would make your writing more successful, then please do. So you can see I've included um, a rhetorical question. Uh, did you know that you produce? I've included a, a question here. I've included um, a simile here. My little heart was thumping like a drum. Um, I tried desperately to free myself from its grip. I've included a bit of personification there. Um, words like menacing, dark abyss. I'm trying to up-level my vocabulary. Okay, so this is going to be the last bit of writing that you do for us in year five. So really do try to make it a good one. Although I've given you success criteria, remember, I've also suggested that you could include these things. And also use your knowledge, showcase us everything that you've learned this year so far, okay?
make it your best writing yet. So I hope that that helps you year five and I'm really looking forward to reading your um, letters from uh, Sammy and um, if you do need any extra help don't forget that you can use Microsoft Teams to get in touch with your teacher. So have a good week, take care and I'll see you soon.